Hi, this is Don, and recently I posted this uh, new Skillshare class on my page. It's a two and a half hour class showing you how to create this uh, loop animation here in Cinema 4D and After Effects. I am recording this uh, video you're watching as a preview or an example of uh, what you should expect if you decide to check this out. So it's really just a single long advert, but I'm also actually going to show you how to do something, which is how to create this Outran style sun that we see in our loop. This is uh, covered in one of the lessons, I think lesson number six, and uh, I go through everything step by step, not only for this element, but for the entire thing. So if you find this video you're watching interesting, you may definitely want to check out the actual full class on Skillshare and you can sign up using my link and get two months free trial membership, which you can cancel at any time, even before you get charged. And in the meantime, you can watch uh, my class, all of my other classes and any other classes you want. So you really can't lose, especially if you're looking to learn some uh, new things. Anyway, I will put the link for that below the video and uh, or you can also go to visualdon.uk slash retro and sign up using uh, my link and that uh, gets me a small amount of money kicked back to me by uh, Skillshare. Anyway, let's uh, continue. Let's start with a disk shape here. Set the orientation to Z plus so it's facing upright. And let's get a cube. I'll put the width to 400 and the height to let's say 10. And put this cube into a cloner. And the count should be something like 20, but the gap in between is too large. So this should be lowered to just 20 to create this kind of uh, look. Let's go into one of the views, the front view, and pull this down to just where it starts to be, or this whole shape here starts to contain the entire disk. So I know that's going to be about negative 100. In fact, exactly that. I've done this before a few times already, so. Um, Okay, let's uh, take a boo tool. We want to cut into the disk shape using this uh, set of cubes. So the boo tool is found over here. Put our cloner in there and the disk. And with the disk above the, the cloner, you will get the effect working already. We want to animate this. And my timeline is currently at three seconds. Let me set this to eight. And uh, if you are wondering why my timeline is in seconds, it's the first thing I change in any version of Cinema 4D that I install. Anyway, go to preferences and in units, you want to change your animation unit to SMPTE, which displays time in seconds. And then even above that too, you still get the frames displayed when you scrub through here in this bluish color. By default, you know, it's frames, which uh, I don't know why that's default. I much prefer to just work in seconds, you know, makes much more sense to me. Let's go to the start of our animation. Frame zero, go to the coordinates of this cloner. Actually, this is going to be the end position. So go to the end frame and set the position Y to negative 100, press control and click this uh, gray circle, the gray circle there to set the keyframe. Go back to frame zero and let's go to negative 200. You will see there was no shift in how the overall effect looks like on the disk there. That's because the relative position of the cubes we are, the cubes we are cutting with stays the same whether it's set to negative 100 and 200. So if you look at the center cube, the way it cuts through the disk there, 
the position at this frame is the same as the position on this frame, just because of the way we set you know, the size of each cube, its position, and so on. And uh, this is crucial because when creating a loop animation, your first frame and your last frame have to be identical. Otherwise, there will be a glitch and the illusion will be broken. But uh, if it lines up, it will give the illusion of a perfect loop. Let's go to our timeline and open up th that keyframe track. And uh, it should be set to linear so that we have a constant speed to our animation. Now, if you wanted to speed this up, you could, of course, shorten the timeline you know, to like half, maybe, let's say four seconds. But um, you are probably not going to create a four second scene. But uh, eight seconds is a good length here. So what I would do is, uh, if this needed to be faster, the initial starting value would just be a larger uh, number. So let's say negative 300. Now it's going to be moving a longer distance from the first frame to the last frame. But for this particular tutorial, let's just stick to negative 200. And if you needed more you know, sets of cubes going up, you just go to the cloner and increase the number. Doesn't really matter past a certain point, but um, if you do need some more, just uh, increase this here. What's next? The way the sun looks in this uh, project is that the lines start off larger and progressively get smaller until they actually disappear completely and it creates this really cool effect you see here. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. We're going to go to the cloner, go to more graph effector and plane. We want to affect the scale. So in the parameters options, let's untick position, scale, and we only want to affect the y scale. So this one here, s, y, set this to negative one. Now that's going to shrink all the cubes to 0%, which means all of our lines will disappear. We need to create a fall off range, which uh, restricts the effects of the plane effector using a linear range. Okay, I should just do it instead of trying to explain it. Uh, in abstract terms. If I go to the um, fall off tab and go to linear field and make sure the direction is Y, which is up and down. So let's say Y plus and just move it to line up the top limit with where you want the last line to appear. So for me, that's about two thirds of the way up on the disc shape or maybe three quarters about there or so. If there are too many lines to obstruct what's uh, going on, we can go to display and just do grow shading with no lines so we don't see the segments. And that cleans up the view just a touch. So now with that uh, fall off, our lines start with a width of 100% or close to that and progressively get uh, a narrower as uh, they travel up the shape of the disk here. And if I play that through as an animation, the looping we did before is preserved. And uh, yeah, I can change how this is mapped by just moving it. Also, maybe don't make it larger than it needs to be. Somewhere like this, perhaps. And the disk shape itself, we can give this more segments, let's say 48. So it's more round. You could play with other things here, such as the height of the cuts. So if you go to the cube, just change the Y size. Let's say, uh, make it half the size. So five. And the looping is still going to work here. And then if we want to shorten the distance in between, we can go to the cloner itself and lower the movement here, let's say to 10. Now, because the whole shape is much smaller, 
we want to increase the number of clones. So let's put the count up to, let's say, 40, just to make sure we maintain the whole effect. But that's too narrow, really. I just wanted to show you how that works. Let's go back to what we had. The next thing, or the last thing, rather, is the material. Double click to create a new one and go to Luminance, Texture, and Gradient. Let's disable the color channel and reflectance. Set this to 2DV so that it's vertical. And uh, quickly apply this to the disk. And of course, you know, anything that's retro wave has, has to be purple and orange. And you can adjust these uh, handles. Okay, I've gone the wrong direction there. In fact, it should be yellow at the top. So let's invert this. Really up to you how you uh, do this. And let's say you want the whole thing to be brighter. You go to the brightness, set this to maybe 150. You see there is no change. That's because we have to put the mix mode from normal to multiply. And now when you change this brightness, it affects this uh, layer too. Okay. So we are getting very close to basically what we have in the video. Now in the final video itself, you know, it's an entire scene. And this, these are all the other things which are covered in the Skillshare class. I just wanted to make a quick teaser for you guys and also show you how to do something which I think is pretty interesting at the same time. So I would say that's it. Now you know how to create the classic Ultron style sun in Cinema 4D. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys check out the class. Bye.